Hi, I'm Tony Szymanski, Associate Professor of Gifted Studies at Western Kentucky University. Thank you for your interest in learning about my study on intense gifted adults. I first became interested in intensity uh, when I attended the Wallace Symposium at the Bell and Blank Center. And I heard Michael Piachowski talk about his new book, Mellow Out, They Say, If Only I Could. Uh, at the end of his presentation, tears were running down my face and I realized I'm not weird. I'm just gifted and intense. And that launched a whole literally life-changing moment where I went from being a business executive to quitting my job, selling my house and moving to Iowa City to attend the University of Iowa and become a professor of gifted education. This is a topic near and dear to my heart and one that I hope will um, help you help people in your lives or even yourselves. So to begin with, um, this study is based on Dabrowski's ideas of overexcitability. Overexcitability was a translation from his Polish word that meant really super stimulatability, but that's really hard to say. Um, one of the problems with translation though is we tend as Americans to think of over as too much, whereas really the, um, the interpretation or the original word meant like overjoyed, you know? So we can't have too much joy, right? It, it, it was a similar situation, but through the years, um, teachers, professors, professionals, researchers, we've tended to uh, apply a little bit of um, a judgment to that. And so uh, we, what um, a lot of us in the field use is intensities to reflect uh, a lack of judgment on the situation. It's just a description of what, what is happening with the participants or with the people. So intensity is different than personality. It represents an instinctive response to the perception of stimulus. It isn't limited just to academic learning though. The same synapse and neural connections that allow the gifted brain to perceive and process academic information quickly also respond to other stimuli more effect efficiently than average brains, which may lead to advanced abilities in social and emotional issue areas. Just as we cannot ask gifted children or adults to become less intelligent and stop thinking, we cannot ask these same people who are experiencing the world through heightened perception to shut that off. People who are intense have a qualitatively different existence that doesn't end when they graduate and are no longer in a gifted program. So the purpose of my study was to examine the lives of some gifted adults who have grown up with intensities to better understand their needs as they were developing and the ways in which we can provide support to intense gifted children to help them create positive identities and promote healthy psychosocial development. There are five areas that um, are typically associated with overexcitability or intensity. They're psychomotor. Those are the kids or the people who are always on the go. You can tell when they're learning something new, they get excited, they start to talk fast, they might start using their hands. Um, some kids jump up and down. These are also the people who, um, if they're moving, they, they learn things better if they're able to move, whether that's walking or pacing or squeezing a little squish ball, just some type of movement. These are the super high energy people. Um, if you're a parent of some uh, psychomotor intense individuals, you know how exhausting that can be. These kids are go, 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 and only have brief pauses, never a full stop. People who have um, sensual, overexcitabilities or intensities experience the physical senses at a heightened dimension. So um, smells, they may be very sensitive to smells or sound or light or feelings. You know, when your kids are complaining about the seams in the socks or the jeans, that's not them being difficult. Well, sometimes it might be, but most usually it's because of this of sensual excitability or intensity. They just feel things stronger. The smells that might be mildly annoying to an average person become intolerable to someone who has this sensitivity. Intense people with imagination tend to daydream and make up wild fantasies and they just really enjoy imaginative play. Um, 
sometimes what's happening inside their brain is way more interesting than what's going on in school. And they can maybe get in trouble for that. But these are also the people who are very creative. Um, they just think of really interesting ways to connect seemingly disparate ideas. A lot of us can identify with intellectual intensity. That's just the need to know why. It's a passionate curiosity. It's not your two-year-old who's just bugging you. It is, it's like a passion. It's an itch that, that you just have to scratch and scratch to satisfy it. Thank goodness for the internet because we can um, follow those rabbit holes and get answers to seemingly bizarre questions. Uh, but if you are intellectually intense, you don't stop until you have satisfied that curiosity. That might be why you'll see a lot of people, not just children or teens, they just pursue those rabbit holes down the internet. And then suddenly just as passionate and obsessive as they were about that topic, they're over it. And, and that's someone who's intellectually intense. They're, when that need has been felt, filled up, they're ready to move on to the next one. And our last one is emotional sensitivity. This is the person who everyone tells to relax, you know, um, as if that just saying that's going to fix the situation. If you have emotional intensity, the highs are high and the lows are devastating. And I'm not talking about like a bipolar or mental illness. I'm just talking about feeling things very, very deeply. Things that wouldn't maybe affect an average person as much deeply affect people with emotional sensitivity. They are very attuned to justice or injustice. Um, these are the people who will see that commercial for homeless pets or homeless people and a month later are still thinking about it and asking about it. And so these are uh, people who are very, very sensitive um, to not only their own emotions, but the emotions of others. So let me talk to you about the participants in this study. I had five um, adults in varying degrees of professional life who were identified as gifted and participated in gifted programming in their um, schooling years, K-12 years. So this is just a little bit of background on them. Um, I spent over 15 hours interviewing them and we went through things from early school to home life. And really I wanted to get at what was it like to be a profoundly gifted person in growing up. And you can see by the different ages, um, they had different experiences based on what was happening in their social um, lives at the time. The biggest theme that came out to me was the idea of feeling so different isolation, even from um, other typically smart people. Uh, they recognized as early as kindergarten that they were different from other people. This is something that's really important to understand because um, while well, typically in schools that do identify kids for gifted services, they don't do so until about third or fourth grade. So these people um, understood and felt different from kindergarten on. So if you're feeling different and you're feeling isolated for the first four years of schooling, what do you think that might do as you are moving through school? Um, so this was a very interesting topic for me to um, hear from my participants. It also points to the need that every state needs to identify and serve gifted students because in 18 states, these kids would never be identified. So this isolation wouldn't end in fourth grade, it would continue on throughout their whole school experience. Um, a lot of them said that they felt like they were from another planet. They just, they didn't even feel like they could communicate with their classmates. They just, they thought, and this is the interesting thing about why we need to talk about giftedness and we need to talk about it with our kids at a young age because these kids were smart and they felt different. So they made up reasons, you know, if they weren't alien, then something was the matter with their classmates or something was the matter with them. And that's where, what I found really troubling. They all talked about um, feeling more comfortable talking with older adults. And we know this, right? Gifted kids, you know, they want to talk to their intellectual peers. And so a lot of times 
uh, the participants had more satisfying conversations with the adults in their lives. The biggest one that came back to me was a deep sense of justice. And this goes back to that emotional sensitivity. Um, these people in my study all felt the, the need to stick up for the underdog, to participate in um, protests, to really talk to power and explain and show uh, errors of their ways in order to make a more just world for themselves and for others. The sense of justice is really was really strong with these students, these people. So you'll notice that there's different colors on the slides. These were um, some direct quotes from the participants about what does it mean? You know, especially I was asking them to try to describe what intensity meant to, you know, if other people wanted to understand it. And the one here about the knob is turned up to 10.5 and there's no way to turn it down. That really spoke to me because so often, like I said, we tell them, settle down, relax, you know, calm down. It's not that bad. It's, you know, it's just some socks. It's, we need to understand that there is no way to turn it down. Just like that saying, you know, stop thinking. We just really, it, that can't happen. And so these are some um, of their words. You know, and again, it's believing in things very strongly and being vocal about them, you know, and then I asked them, well, what does it look like? And you can see that it's, it's, you know, a willingness to go above and beyond. It is a, um, actually a need to go above and beyond. It's going full out in every aspect. And so that was, um, that was something that was very interesting to me is that not only is it intensity in thought, but it's intensity in behavior. So one of the things that people talked about was they, that their intensities often cause some, some difficulty in their relationships. Um, they had um, a hard time talking with others and making relationships with others. But there's good news. And that is once they did find one true friend, that helped a lot. And so, um, you know, if you are feeling things very differently than other people, there might be some issues with that. There might be some difficulty in communicating with people and feeling isolated. And so we can see these relationships um, issues come out. Talking about families, you know, sometimes two intense people in one family can be great and supportive and really help one another to understand what's happening. Other times those intensities can clash and cause problems and make it very, very difficult. And in a family where perhaps giftedness um, and intensity is not well understood or not recognized, um, that can cause problems as well. And so this is really points to the idea of how important it is that we educate ourselves as parents, educators, and just individuals living in a society about different nuances of being someone who is gifted and how that may present itself in intensities and how we can support one another, our children and ourselves to accept this and be supported as we grow as individuals. So one of the things um, that really came out to me when I was talking to them about what does it look like and what are your issues was that all but one of my participants stated that they used illegal drugs and alcohol extensively from their teen years till about 30. The one who didn't um, had a parent who was an alcoholic. And so that person avoided any kind of substances. But this struck me as very um, disturbing because yes, for these people, they were able to use illegal drugs and alcohol and emerge successful but it got me worrying about all of those people who weren't successful, um, those people who succumbed to drugs and alcohol and were not able to, to break that pattern and find other ways of coping. So I talked to the participants about, okay, what changed? What did you do? Um, how did you, you know, move from using drugs and alcohol to other things? And important to note, they didn't use drugs and alcohol to try to fit in with others. 
they used it to kind of blunt the intensity, to reduce those feelings, to try to quote unquote, feel normal, not be normal. And so that was really important to me to understand and kind of pull together. So some of the coping mechanisms that they used were um, reading, being out in nature, doing something creative, um, you know, tinkering with things. And one that was really surprising, but was pretty much consistent was some type of gaming, whether that was like a Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop games, some way to get together um, with people who were interested in, in tabletop gaming, in strategies, in imaginative play. That was a real outlet in a way that they were able to connect with other people. They also said making a, a mental connection between what's going on in their physical state and what are they thinking. So how did their thoughts, you know, um, connect with their feelings? That came as they got older, which happens for lots of us. Um, but finding or creating their own tribe, you know, finding that one true friend who really got them made all the difference in the world. And to me, that really speaks to the need to support gifted services and to support and find ways to bring people together. Um, thank goodness we learned with COVID, right? With Zoom and all the different ways we can connect with people around the world, because this opens up an outlet where you can find your tribe and you're not geographically isolated. And so this is something that's really important for um, especially intense gifted people. They also learned how to channel their intensity or cultivate their intensity. So they would go and ride their bike till they fell off it, literally, um, in order to then be able to have kind of a more even energy level rather than being so intense. Every single participant mentioned meditation or mindfulness and how that was helpful. And I have been working with students um, to develop meditation and mindfulness as young as kindergarten age to see how that helps them. And it, the results have been phenomenal. Um, allowing themselves time and space to pursue their intensities, to pursue their interests, and to understand that they may have intense responses to things and they just need to have some time and space to respond to that. Also seeking out challenging experiences, which again points to um, the need for gifted services and programming. Um, by follow, seeking out challenging experiences, they found other people who were like them and they also built self-confidence and just kind of were able to cultivate those things that are um, special about having intensities. So one thing that I would like us to think about is instead of seeing intensities as being too much of something or in negative, what if we looked at them as superpowers? What if we looked at the other side of the coin? So instead of saying someone was hyper, they were super high energy. If you want someone to get a lot of work done for you, you want someone who's super high energy. You want someone who's gonna go, 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 you know, and get things done. Super high energy is a good thing. Instead of calling them oppositional or argumentative or confrontational, they have a strong sense of justice. Where would we be without Martin Luther King Jr. or Ruth Bader Ginsburg or so many people who have stood up because of their strong sense of justice. That's a quality we need to encourage and, and cultivate. Instead of overly sensitive, they're super sensitive. Where would we be without artists, without musicians who can hear and notice subtle differences? without our food critics and wine sommeliers who can tell the difference, you know, in just some slight subtle note. That makes our world better. We, we need that. Instead of saying they are, um, they question too much, you know, uh, you're, you're just pushy. No, that's someone who's super intelligent. That's someone who's seeking out connection amongst many different ideas and coming up with something new and in, in, innovative that helps move our whole society along. That's something that we should be valuing and celebrating. And the last one of, you know, you're too weird, you're too out there, you know, what in the heck are they thinking? That's someone who's creative, who's willing to take risks. And boy, don't we need more of that. You know, can you ever be too creative? I don't think so. And so that's something we need to think about celebrating and figuring out ways to build these up 
in ourselves and feel proud about them and also for our kiddos instead of it being something that's a negative. Here's some ideas if you have young children that you might think about for school. Um, and the last one was really interesting to encourage challenging activities, but also give them the option to quit and be the best. And I know that might sound controversial, but if you think back to that intelligence intensity, when that need is fulfilled, they may be done with it. And so, you know, that's up to each individual, you know, your kids and you know yourself, but, you know, allowing the idea that you can try something out and see if you like it. It's a way to meet new people and try new things without a lot of pressure. And further, I'd like to support a more holistic approach to education. So, you know, you're not just gifted in academics, it affects your whole life. And we need energy and creative release throughout our day. Whether we are five or 55 or 95, we need to have that ability to, you know, fulfill that side of ourselves. And we need to celebrate and encourage diversity in all and every respect, because that just makes our whole community a better place to be. So again, thanks a lot for your time. My name is Tony Szymanski. This is my website. I would love for you to connect with me if you have any questions, you wanna see what I'm working on next, or you know, just wanna talk about intensities and giftedness, uh, please feel free to reach out anytime. It has truly been my honor and pleasure to spend this time with you and I appreciate you listening to my talk. Thank you.